While investigating the resurgence of wildlife in the Chernobyl forest, some researchers took a video that left them baffled. But as they investigate the blurry figure in the footage, they discover evidence of a shocking occurrence that soon leaves the whole world in shock. Nikolai had spent years monitoring the Chernobyl forest. His job was to track the movements of animals within the exclusion zone, focusing on species that had made an unlikely comeback. Wolves, deer, boars, and even brown bears. Armed with a camera, a radiation detector, and a deep respect for the land that was both thriving and toxic, Nikolai ventured into the forest regularly, carefully documenting the state of the wildlife, but never without the right protective gear and a Geiger counter used to detect the radiation. It was widely believed that Chernobyl would never be habitable by humans for at least 20,000 years, and no one had any idea what the world would look like by then. Yet, amidst the ruins, nature had found a way to reclaim the land, and Nikolai was glad to have the opportunity to witness such a miracle. Wildlife, once driven away by the chaos and radiation, had slowly returned, creating an ecosystem where life persevered despite the toxic soil and air. A team of dedicated researchers had been tracking this unexpected wildlife recovery, trying to understand how animals survive in the radioactive environment. The Chernobyl exclusion zone was a place like no other, completely frozen in time with evidence of a life once lived almost 40 years ago. Many thought that exploring it in such detail would only reopen old wounds that had never truly healed. But others believed that this ecological research was vital to the survival of the animals in the area and could hold the answers to preventing future disasters. So far, the researchers' work had been largely academic, a quiet effort to monitor the slow resurgence of nature. But one video would soon shock the whole world, revealing not just an incredible discovery, but also a dangerous threat lurking in the shadows. When Nikolai had first started the research project, there'd been something unsettling about Chernobyl. Toys still sat outside empty homes, the swings in the park still rocked in the breeze, but it was all a reminder of one of the worst nuclear disasters in human history. Over the years, though, he'd witnessed the forest bursting back to life, and it was a privilege to do so. It was one of the most beautiful things he'd witnessed, watching nature fight against human destruction. There wasn't a day spent at the site where he didn't feel grateful to be there. Due to the grim conditions, much of the monitoring was often done via drones, meaning the researchers could stay outside of the exclusion zone but still see what was happening in some of the worst affected areas. One summer afternoon, Nikolai was preparing his drone, hoping to capture something interesting for the team to analyze. He watched on his monitor as the drone flew over the trees and across a body of water. It was a beautiful sight, with the sun bouncing off the water and the tree canopy reflected in the surface. He spent hours watching the forest's subtle movements, the rustling of leaves, the occasional distant howl of wolves. It was peaceful, almost serene. Then, something unusual caught his eye. Across the pond, a figure appeared at the water's edge. At first, Nikolai couldn't make out what it was. The sunlight reflected off the water, distorting the image, creating a confusing blend of colors and shapes. It looked like a figure squatting by the water, but the outline was indistinct and he couldn't make out any features on the figure. His heart raced as he zoomed in with his camera, struggling to get a clearer shot. Was it an animal or something else? The reflection off the water made it hard to tell. The figure moved slowly, dipping into the water before rising again. It seemed to have a large, bulky form, but the way it crouched by the pond and the way the light played tricks with the image made it impossible to identify. Nikolai adjusted the drone, trying to focus through the glare, but no matter what he did, the scene remained unclear. His mind raced with possibilities. Was it a human? A poacher? Or some animal he hadn't seen before? After capturing several minutes of footage, Nikolai decided to retreat. The battery warning sign had begun to flash on his screen, and the last thing he needed was the drone going down in the forest. He didn't have his gear with him, so wouldn't be able to retrieve it if it fell somewhere hard to access on foot. The figure had moved back into the shadows of the forest, disappearing from view. He packed up his equipment and returned to the research base, eager to analyze the video he had captured. Later that night, as the research team gathered to review the footage, 
the atmosphere was tense with curiosity. The video played on a large monitor, and once again, the indistinct figure by the water's edge appeared. The same sense of confusion hung in the air. Most of the researchers were convinced it wasn't human, because it was far too bulky. The forest also wasn't part of the area tourists could visit, due to the high radiation levels. So what was it? The distorted reflection of the water made it impossible to tell for certain. Nikolai and his colleagues debated the possibilities. There was only one way to tell for certain. They would have to go into the forest and see what evidence they could find. The next day, they all gathered their safety equipment and headed straight for the spot where the mysterious figure had been seen. Now that they were at the water's edge, it was clear to see why the drone had been unable to capture a clear image. The sunlight was almost blinding as it bounced off the water. The sea of green from the reflections of the trees seemed to envelop them. They began to tentatively search the area, and soon enough they gathered some good clues as to what the video footage could be of. By the end of their exploration in the forest, they were convinced that what they'd seen in the water was a bear. What made it so difficult to identify was the way the light bounced off the water's surface, blending the bear's fur with the surrounding landscape and distorting its reflection. It was a striking piece of footage, as it showed the resilience of wildlife in the face of the radioactive environment. The team had spotted tracks and other evidence to show that there were bears in the forest, not just surviving, but thriving. It was an amazing discovery, but that wasn't all they had found in the forest. They'd found evidence of something very concerning. Scattered near the body of water were several signs of human activity that weren't their own. Footprints, discarded food wrappers, and what appeared to be crude traps. It became evident that poachers had been in the area, likely in search of animals to hunt or capture. The researchers were well aware of the dangers these poachers faced. The radiation levels, while manageable for very short visits by trained personnel in protective gear, were still high enough to cause serious health issues for anyone without proper precautions. Poachers, driven by greed or desperation, were not only risking their lives, but also threatening the delicate recovery of the wildlife in the area. It was a concerning development that the team needed to tackle head-on. As the team left the forest, the reality of the discovery began to sink in, and a ripple of shock passed through them all. The video, which had initially been an exciting documentation of the elusive bear population, now seemed much darker. The bear, and likely many other animals, were being hunted by individuals who either didn't understand or didn't care about the dangers they were exposing themselves to. The poachers weren't just endangering themselves, they were also disrupting the fragile balance of the ecosystem. If something wasn't done soon, all the years of work and research would be at risk of collapsing. The researchers realized they had a responsibility to do more than just track wildlife. They needed to raise awareness about the ongoing dangers in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. The video, now verified as authentic and showing the bear in its natural habitat, became the centerpiece of their campaign. They knew that sharing it with the world would not only showcase the amazing things that nature could do when left to its own devices, but it would also highlight the urgent need to protect the animals and keep people out of the exclusion zone. When the video was released online, it quickly went viral. People around the globe were captivated by the haunting image of the bear standing in the water. Its shape, distorted by the reflection, caused many wild theories to circulate, with some believing it couldn't possibly be a bear. But the research team backed up their claim with evidence. However, what shocked the whole world even more was the story behind it, the revelation that poachers were endangering themselves and the wildlife, oblivious to the invisible threat of radiation. There was a public outcry that the poachers were on the verge of destroying something that had taken years to heal, something that may never be the same again but could hold some very important answers for the world. The researchers used the momentum generated by the viral video to launch an educational campaign. They explained how the Chernobyl forest, while appearing lush and vibrant, still held significant dangers. Radiation levels, though reduced since the disaster, remained hazardous in certain areas. The animals, while thriving in this human-free environment, had adapted to the conditions in ways that were still not fully understood. Removing them from the zone or killing them for profit could have unforeseen consequences, not just for the poachers, but for the ecosystem as a whole. Given that the animals fed on plants that had grown from radioactive soil, 
or other animals that lived in the radioactive water. There was no telling what these conditions did to the animals. There simply wasn't enough evidence yet to show how the animals were affected as they continued to repopulate the land. They also emphasized the need for people to respect the exclusion zone's boundaries. Over the years, adventurers and so-called dark tourists had ventured into the area, eager to explore the ruins of Pripyat or capture footage of abandoned buildings overtaken by nature. But the researchers warned that this behavior was reckless. Legitimate tours of Chernobyl had been set up with guides who knew what they were doing and who could take tourists to places where radiation levels were lower and therefore fine to explore for a short period. They could try and prevent people from putting themselves at risk, but there was still the occasional person eager to get a glimpse at something that others couldn't. While the forest might look like any other from a distance, the ground beneath it held decades of radioactive contamination. Even brief exposure in the wrong areas could lead to long-term health effects. The video's impact was undeniable. News outlets around the world covered the story, bringing attention to both the wildlife recovery efforts and the dangers of illegal poaching. Environmental organizations rallied behind the researchers, supporting their call for increased protection of the exclusion zone. This would allow the animals to continue thriving in the area and the researchers to continue their work unhindered. Security was tightened around the area and increased penalties were put in place for anyone caught entering the zone without authorization. The team were sure that it wouldn't be a deterrent for some, but now they were better equipped to deal with any trespasser and they had the authorities on their side. For Nikolai, the experience was a sobering reminder of how easily humans could destroy things. He'd felt the devastation of Chernobyl when he'd first arrived, but over time he'd seen the place slowly regenerating. If it hadn't been for his drone footage, they might have been oblivious to the poachers until it was too late. He had spent years documenting the remarkable recovery of wildlife, but this footage had exposed the harsh reality that human interference, whether through poaching or tourism, could undo decades of progress. The researchers had almost lost what little they had, but this wake-up call just made them even more fiercely protective of their work and the strange place they had all come to have incredible respect for. As the weeks passed, Nikolai and his team continued their work, but now they increased their efforts to track poachers and prevent further damage to the ecosystem. Somewhat naively, they had all taken up this job believing that they would never come up against problems like this. But they had underestimated just how destructive and ignorant some humans could be. More cameras were placed throughout the forest, not only to monitor the animals, but to catch anyone who might try to enter the zone illegally. Not only did this give the researchers more insight into the ways that the forest was growing and changing, but it made them feel a little safer. Chernobyl Forest was highly unlikely to ever be enjoyed by humans ever again, but that didn't mean that it couldn't be a home for the flora and fauna that had sprung up in the wake of devastation. The team were glad that the video had had such a huge impact on the world. Their little project had gone on largely unnoticed for years, but now the whole world was seeing a little glimmer of hope in a place where tragedy seemed to be deep-rooted in every house, tree, and abandoned toy, a reminder of the lives that had once occupied the place. The validation from the viral video was a little boost that none of them had realized they needed. In such a quiet, isolated place that very few people understood, it was easy to just get lost in their work and retreat into themselves. But for the first time, the world was seeing the importance of research projects like theirs. Nikolai had no idea how long he would have to wait until he got a clearer shot of the bear. But for now, his distorted footage would have to do. He felt confident that in time the bear would show itself again and he felt excited for the future. This job never ceased to amaze him, and although he'd failed to get a clear image of the bear, the video had got the world talking and urged governments to take action against those who wanted to harm the animals in Chernobyl Forest, which wasn't a bad outcome for a blurry clip that had terrified him when he first saw it. Now it's over to you. What do you think of this story? Do you know any other stories where weird and mysterious things have been discovered in Chernobyl? We'd love to hear your thoughts, so please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.